hello everyone i hope you all are doing well so in this video i'll go over lab 3 solution for unit 3 and for this particular lab you can use the guides and cheat sheets uh, that are available on Moodle. they have all the commands that you would require to use that you are required to use um, in the vi editor so the first thing that i am supposed to do here is I should create lab3 directory. So first of all, mkdir lab3. Okay, that's the first step. And I've created it, uh, created it in my home uh, directory. Home directory is the wave symbol, okay? So now I should have lab3 folder. Now within the lab3 folder or the lab3 directory you are supposed to use um, vi command to create a file called lab3 part 1 your student id.txt and then copy and paste this particular text uh, from the file okay so you can write vi lab3 slash because we're supposed to create it within lab3 right so lab3 slash and the name of the file so lab3 part 1 underscore whatever your id is 20123456 whatever your id is to be honest um, and then dot txt don't write xxx write your id there okay and then press enter now you are within the vi mode okay here when you want to um, insert text in the file you're supposed to press i and when you press i you will notice that here at the bottom of the file um, or the bottom of the screen you can see it says insert this means you are now in insert mode and anything you type will be typed uh, onto the file so i already copied it uh, from I, I mean I already copied this text here from the word document now I'm going to paste it here and to paste it you can just press right click if you press right click you it will paste whatever was copied um, and then you have to save the file on the Unix server in the lab 3 directory uh, the, na the file name should the file should be named okay we we did that we did that already and you will use this file in part three of the lab continue to part two okay so after pasting the text you're you're supposed to save the file how do you save it first of all you need to know in which mode you are currently in in this uh, i mean at the bottom of the screen you can see it says insert so that means you're in insert mode when you want to save uh, something you you just press escape on your keyboard, which is ESC, the key that says ESC. You press that and notice the insert is now gone. When that happens, you're supposed to write colon WQ, okay? And you'll notice it's typing it here for me. WQ stands for write and quit, okay? So what essentially will happen is whatever is written on the file here will be saved and the editor will be closed okay um now we're back to putty uh, i mean back to the prompt so we're done with part one if you want to see the file you can just uh, write the command more and see if it saved the text so when you write more it just displays what's saved in the file and you can see it has the same text that we pasted there okay now in part two again you can use the cheat sheet and the guide um there's a they're saying that there's a file located at this location home slash home slash lab files and it's called lab three underscore part two dot txt you what you're supposed to do is copy this file the lab three part two txt from this location to your uh, lab actually to your um, I'm not sure it, if it should be in lab three folder or if it should be in your student ID because it's part of lab. Three. I'll just put it in the lab three folder. So 
copy this particular file to your lab 3 folder here okay so how for that you, you you need to use the cp command which stands for copy and then we know the 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 file is at location slash home slash lab files and the name of the file is lab 3 part 2 so slash home slash lab files and then slash lab 3 part 2 dot txt that's where you're copying it from so cp stands for copy where you're copying it from and then where you want it to be copied so i need i need this file to be copied to lab 3 folder okay so if that happens now if you write ls lab 3 you can see the file was copied successfully so copy command where you're copying it from and uh, where you're copying it to okay so that's the first um, okay check the file using a appropriate command we did ls you can even do ls minus al oh, sorry ls minus al and then lab3 because that's where we copied it so you can see the file is there anyway um, so the next thing let me just clear it the next thing is edit the file using vi and add the following sentence to the end of the text so here um, we need to open the file we just copied in the lab 3 folder so you you're supposed to write vi lab 3 slash and then the lab 3 part 2 file this will open that particular file uh, that we just copied now here you can see that the cursor is the green one i don't know why this is being highlighted but the cursor here is the green one that means um see when you open uh, any word document you'll see that there's a cursor right where you can start typing in in this editor the green thing here is the cursor okay now you have all these uh, lines of text what what they're asking you to do is you need to copy this sentence and add it to the end of the file which means this is supposed to be the last sentence so either you can move your cursor down using the down arrow here but let's say the the file had like 1000 lines uh, of text in that case you can't i mean it's not ideal that you use the the down or the up arrow what you're supposed to use again this should be available in your cheat sheet and even um, even in your powerpoint a table is available for all these commands if you just press shift and capital g it takes you to the end of the file shift and then capital g so now the cursor is at the end of the file now, in order to insert the text, again, I need to press I, and that is small i, okay? Uh, it's not capital letter. So I, again, you can notice it's in insert mode. So you can just now press the right click, I mean, do the right click on the mouse and it will paste um, the text in the file. Uh, again, you need to save this file and check uh, that you have updated the file successfully so again we are at the moment in the insert mode you will press escape and then uh, colon wq to write and then quit okay and then if you just write more lab 3 slash lab part 2 you can see that the sentence was added okay so the file was updated successfully now for the third part uh, for the third question um you're supposed to delete the sentence bahrain poly is located in manama which is a lie it's not in manama uh, so that's why i think they are asking you to delete that um so you have to after deleting that line you have to save the file and check it with, if it was updated successfully so same command vi lab 3 
slash lab three underscore part two. And then you have to delete the second line, right? So I would go back up here and then how do you delete it? You need to press D twice. So D, notice here it showed what I'm typing, right? So D, I pressed it once again and the line is gone. Okay, so that's how you would delete a line uh, to D, okay? I mean, D and D, you press it twice, okay? Um, then throughout the file, the word poly appears many times using the VI editor. Okay, sorry, before that, you have to save this, right? So you have to click or not click, sorry, you have to press escape and then colon WQ, okay? That would write and save. And again, if you run the more command, it will show you that the the sentence Bahrain Poly is, is located is located in Manama is deleted now. So the update was successful. Now, again, we have to go back into the file for the fourth question. And throughout the file, the word poly appears many times. Using the VI editor, perform a search and replace the, and replace, change the word poly to polytechnic. So here you notice that poly, the word poly with a capital P, and remember it's case sensitive in Linux, right? So small p is not treated as same, the same as the, uh, the same as the capital P. Anyway, so here you're supposed to find all the words that are poly in this file and replace them with polytechnic. Okay, so for that you have to do a search. Okay, throughout the file you have to perform a search and here you have to press for how, how do you search you should go into the command mode you know the command mode is anything that you type using the colon so anything that basically has a colon whenever you press you whenever you type colon that means you're right now in the command mode okay when the file opens up you are in the vi mode this is the command mode this is where you can write commands and when you press i that means you're in the insert mode so here to search now, notice the question says throughout the file. When the question says that you have to uh, find and replace every word throughout the file, you're supposed to use the percentage symbol. Okay, percentage for throughout the file. If it's only on the particular line, then no need to put percentage. That means if you, if you remove the percentage symbol here, um, it will only replace everything that was found on that specific line on the current line okay s for search and then slash and then you have to type poly Okay, sorry about that. Anyway, uh, you have to type the word poly. So this is the word you're looking for, okay? This is the word that you're trying to find and then slash the word you're going to replace it with, okay? And then you can even put global for the global change and confirmation C for confirmation so that before changing all the words it's going to ask you to confirm whether you want to change it or not so here if you notice when i when i wrote poly here it's highlighting some words for me poly 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 but then the problem is here the word is already polytechnic right so if that's the case if the word you're looking for is part of another word then if you want to change that uh, or if you want to only look for words that are completely 
poly by themselves without anything next to them then you're supposed to use something before the word so this is the word we're trying to search right you will write the other slash and then starting bracket and then the other slash closing bracket this means only search for the word poly not like the whole word should be poly and that will be replaced with polytechnic okay I'll, I'll just remove the confirmation but if you put the c it's going to ask for confirmation so again because this is important and you should understand this well uh, when you write colon that means you're in the command mode you can perform certain actions and then if you write percentage that means you're trying to edit or replace throughout the whole file s stands for search then the first slash after the first slash you have to write the word that you're finding and then after the second slash you have you've you have to write the word that you are uh, replacing it with and then you can add extra flags at the end this is optional if you do it without the slash g it's going to work fine um, but yeah that's how you would do this if I press enter notice how the words poly are now changed to polytechnic now I want to leave like I want to save this right so again escape colon WQ okay now again more command you will notice the words are now changed to polytechnic this was not changed because the P is not capital so we, we will leave that now you have to rename the file to lab 3 part 2 student ID txt okay so how do you rename you're supposed to use before that let's clear you're supposed to <clears throat> use the command mv the old file which is lab 3 lab 3 part 2 txt and you have to name it now the reason i'm putting lab 3 is because it's in the folder lab 3 okay so lab 3 slash lab 3 part 2 and then your student id is 2 0 whatever your student id is dot txt okay now if you do ls minus l lab 3 you will notice you have part one and then part two okay and it's changed like the name for part two is now changed to whatever was the new name now uh, we're done with part two now in in part three you're supposed to create backups for these files so here lab three part one uh, student one i mean student id that La, that uh, file should have the backup name with the date and then BAK okay so here you have um, again before that if you want to create backup cop like backup for your files you're supposed to use the copy command which will be CP and then uh the the file that you're copying so lab 3 slash part sorry lab 3 part 1 this is the old file you have to uh, not the old file this is the file you want to back up you want to create a backup for so again lab 3 i want it to be created in lab 3 folder so lab 3 and lab 3 part 1 all you have to do is at the end add date which is dd stands for date so which will be 11 10 and then 22 and instead of txt you are supposed to write bak bak is for backup files okay so it will take the file it will take this file and create a copy of the same file but with an extension bak and at the end the timestamp for the date uh, for the file the same command but with part 2 okay so that's done now if you run ls minus l 
lab three, you will see you have the backups and the original files. You have four files at the end. Okay. Now you're supposed to archive all four files to create one file named lab three. Now, okay, sorry, this is part four. In part four, you're supposed to create archive for all of these files, the, the four files that you have now. How do you create that? Just remember this command, tar cvf, okay, tar cvf, the name that you want to give to the new file, which will be given in the question. So in the question, it says lab3 student id dot tar. So lab3 student not student, you just write whatever your ID is, dot tar, because we're creating an archive. And then you have to put all these files here. So either you can list all these files one by one, uh, okay, so for adding the files, you are supposed to you can either use um you can either add all of these files one by one so you can write let's say lab okay sorry i took a break um anyway let me open it again Okay, so we were supposed to create the tar. So tar, um, I'm not sure again whether this tar should be created in lab three, but let's let's do it in lab three, no problem. So CD lab three. So either you can, okay, let me show you the two steps. So either you can go to lab three and uh, lab3 folder and add all of these files one by one or you can just take the whole folder and archive that so in I, I'll show you the first one now so it would look something like this tar cvf the name of the tar again so lab3 whatever your student id is and then dot tar and then one by one lab three part one um, dot txt lab three part one the backup and then lab three part two txt lab three part two the backup so all the four files will be added to the archive okay that's one way okay um, the other way is you can go back here and just run the tar command but uh, archive the whole folder so lab 3 I will just rename it so we know which is which. Okay, so it, it takes the whole folder. You don't have to name each file uh, separately. But these are the two ways. It's good to know both. Um, maybe in the exam they tell you to pick the correct one and maybe the correct option is the one that has multiple files. So it's, be so it's best to know both. Um, so now you have the archive. Now you are supposed to compress the lab3 underscore um, whatever tar file that you have using the command zip. So I would use the command zip because for some reason the other commands when you using the other commands when you compress and when you download the file later on it doesn't open up properly. So I'll just use the zip command and you, you can use the same. Um, 
so zip and then the name of the file which is lab3 it's it should be given in the question uh what would be the name okay this is the name lab3 your student id and dot zip so lab3 uh student id dot zip and then the file that you want to add to this compressed file so it would be lab3 uh lab3 tar okay now if I do ls, I can see that there is the tar file that I created for the whole folder and then there's a zip file that I just created. Now, what you need to do is you need to go to PSFTP and download the zip file and upload that to Moodle. Okay, so if you go to PSFTP, open student1 or student2, whichever one is your host, uh, student one dot bp test dot cloud login okay now i need to download the file uh, so okay before that every time you go to psftp you need to set lcd which is um whichever wherever you want to set it but I'll just set it uh, to the desktop for now. So users, whatever your user account is, and then desktop. Don't copy this because it's only for me. If you want to figure your um, your desktop location out, you can just go to File Explorer, um, this PC, C drive, uh, where is users, users, and then whatever your user account is and then go to desktop copy this okay that is your location don't write my location because i noticed some students were trying this with the location that i'm using so your location will be different find that out and use it in lcd and then um you can and then after this you can write get lab three underscore two zero now how many x are there one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven dot zip okay so if i go to desktop now i should have lab three where is lab three okay this is lab two, lab three. So if you open this, you have lab three folder. You have the archive. And then you have all those files. Okay. All you have to do is upload this zip file to Moodle. That's all you have to do. And that should be the end for this um, for this lab sorry i was i mean this seems a little bit out of place but it's uh just because i'm doing it maybe after a while um anyway so i hope it was helpful if you have any questions you can let me know um and all the very best